I have recently, I have recently received a very good question to which I'd like to respond and it will also give me a chance to talk a little bit about the role of mathematical expressions in linear algebra and all of mathematics. And in fact, the way mathematical expressions are used in linear algebra is more representative of the rest of mathematics as say a subject like calculus. So to set up the question, consider this matrix and let's try to figure out its null space. So of course you can notice two relationships among the columns. One is that the second column is the same as the first, and so the first element in the null space is 1, negative 1, 0. You might also notice that the third column is twice the first, leading to this element of the null space. And so this is one legitimate expression representing the null space. But you may also notice a different relationship. So let's look at this expression now. So the first element represents the same relationship. The second column is the same as the first. But this element represents the fact that the sum of the first two columns equals the third column, which can be a replacement for the relationship that we noticed before, that the third column is twice the first. We could say instead, what I'm seeing is that this third column is the sum of the first two, leading to 1, 1, negative 1. So we've discussed at length that these expressions are, while different, actually equivalent. And equivalence means that all of the vectors that are represented by this expression are also represented by this expression and vice versa. For example, when alpha equals 1 and beta equals 1, this expression equals 3, negative 1, negative 1. And to get the same vector from this expression, we have to take alpha equals 2 and beta equals 1. And the question was, isn't that a little bit confusing that alpha equals 1 here and at the same time alpha equals 2 here? Wouldn't it be better to use alpha 1 and beta 1 in this expression so that they don't mix? So you could say that alpha equals 1, beta equals 1, and alpha 1 equals 2, and beta 1 equals 1. That way there's no confusion and there's no mixing between the two expressions. So on the one hand that's a good comment and it's a valid point. A somewhat valid point. So actually naming these coefficients alpha 1 and beta 1 would certainly not cause any problems except that perhaps there will be too many symbols on the board. But the important point is that these expressions don't mix in the first place. The null space of a matrix is not an expression. Here the notation makes it seem like an expression alpha times this vector plus beta times this vector. But that's not the null space. The null space is a collection of vectors. That's a very different animal. A collection of vectors versus a mathematical expression. So they're very different things. And the null space is a collection of vectors. And of course this expression merely represents or tells us, notates, what that collection of vectors is. So this expression represents a collection of vectors. This expression represents a collection of vectors. So when you look at these expressions, what you should imagine and get in touch with is not so much the expression itself, but what it represents. So here, this equality says that the null space is a certain collection of vectors. So in that, there's already no alpha and beta. It says there are infinitely many vectors. One of them is 3 minus 1 minus 1. Another one of them is taking alpha equals 10, beta equals 1, 12 minus 10 minus 1. Right? That's another one. Of course, that would be an impractical way to capture the set of vectors because you would have to list infinitely many vectors. So an expression is a much uh, more effective way of doing it. But alpha is not really a symbol that represents one number. It says any possible number. So what this says is that the null space consists of, is a set of vectors that can be obtained from this expression by letting alpha be any number whatsoever and beta be any number whatsoever. And all of them are in this expression already. So there is nothing happening at the same time between this expression and in this expression. In this expression, alpha and beta represent all possible real numbers. And in this expression, 
alpha and beta represent all possible values. So there's really no reason to give this thing or this thing a different letter because it doesn't represent a particular value, it represents all possible numbers. So there is no clashing. And once again, the overarching point is that the null space is not an expression, but a collection of vectors. So what you see here is that null space equals a collection of vectors, or alternatively, null space equals the same collection of vectors, which can be captured by a different expression. There is no clashing between these two expressions. So this is a lesson for the rest of mathematics. And it's actually a lesson that gets quite lost when you study calculus, where the subject is very much, at least the way it's taught, is very much about manipulating expressions and going from one expression to another equivalent expression. Linear algebra is not about manipulating expressions to the same extent. It's all about the concepts and the objects that are behind the expressions that you see on the board or on a piece of paper. So get in the habit of looking at an expression and asking, not philosophically, but very practically, what does this expression represent?